Welcome back. We want to update you on a fighter, Pritchard Cologne. As you might remember, he was hurt in a PBC fight back on October 17th. The good news, he's showing some positive signs, but he has a long road of recovery ahead of him. All of us here at the PBC and FS1 are praying for his full recovery. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. It's Toe to Toe Tuesday here on FS1. And it's time for our main event as we take a look at the Corona tale of the tape. And Gonzalez Jr., he's not only got the advantage in height, but reach as well. And he's got that big right hand. Let's see if he uses it in this fight. Both fighters are in the ring. Let's get the official introduction. Here is Sugar Ray Flores. From the Austin Music Hall here in Austin, Texas, Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event live on FS1. Ten rounds in the Super Bantamweight Division. The three judges ringside are Perry Hillen, Richard Lord, and Anthony Townsend. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds, John Shirley. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with the white trim. His professional record, 22 wins. Six of those coming by way of knockout against three defeats. Fighting out of Monosk, France. Ladies and gentlemen, Madame et Monsieur, Kareem Garfi. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the silver with the pink trim. As a professional, 25 wins, 15 of those coming by way of Kale, against two losses and two bouts even. Fighting out of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros presentando Alejandro Cobrita Gonzalez. Junior. Okay, these trunks are good. These are high, okay? So right there. Give me good, clean fight. Obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Well, Alejandro Gonzalez, Jr. says the biggest lesson he learned from dropping Carl Frampton twice in the first round is he didn't finish him. Gonzalez Jr. says he will not make the same mistake tonight against Gurfi. Gurfi, European champion, started his career with 18 straight wins. Since then, he's gone four and three, but tonight, he says in his U.S. debut, he will be explosive. This is round one. Gurfi in the black trunks. It's Gonzalez Jr., the silver trunks, the pink trim. And we are commercial free for the rest of this main event. Here's a short left by Gurfi. And I think early on, Jose, we've seen something of what you talked about. He's tried to use that jab to maintain the distance, talking about Gurfi. <laughs> yeah, Gurfi's doing a good job. Uh landing some punches and also uh, bringing his hands right, up, right back up. Uh, he's giving a tight guard and uh, I think that's, that's going to be key for him. Meanwhile, Gonzalez Jr. has tried to pound the body with those left to the body, those left hooks to the body early on. Yeah, I've noticed that too as well, Brian. He's uh, touching the body here and there. And uh, he's trying to start making a bunch of shots in the bank maybe for later on. Oh, big left! Oh, right now. Drops Garfi! He's hurt. He's, he might be done. Oh, he's up. Sorry, the way he was riding in pain. And that's the thing about that high guard. A lot of times that high guard will protect your face, but you can guy a good body puncher, you can get around the elbows and get you to the liver. Another left to the body by Gonzalez Jr. Berger trying to fight his way out of trouble now. Yeah, he's trying to fight Gonzalez off. Meanwhile, moving around, trying to recover from that body shot. It was right on the liver. Minute left in this round. Short left hook by Gurfi. Oh, 
Kohita doing a good job stalking his opponent and uh, finding that, that spot for, for the left hook to the body, right behind the elbow. There's a combination by Gurfi. Tell you what, Gurfi woke up as far as getting his, uh, his hands moving a little bit. That could work to his advantage or disadvantage because Cobrita is still stalking and he's still trying to get to the body. There's a stiff jab by Gonzalez. And that's what I like about Gonzalez, not forgetting the jab. Even despite coming forward, he's making sure he sets his distance with the jab. Final seconds. Right hand by Gurphy. And the exchange there at the bell. Take Gonzalez uh, really finding a spot for the left hook to the body right behind the elbow. Uh, you know, he was using his jab and then mixing it up. He created opening and landed a perfect left hook to the body that brought, brought him down quick. Notice a short uppercut too, though, Jose. He kind of set the, set the leverage with a short little right uppercut. He didn't put anything on the right uppercut, just to kind of set his leverage and put his weight on his left foot so that the hook to the body had all the weight on it. <laughs> Right, is getting instructed to keep on going to the body and doubling up up top. So uh, he needs to keep on going to the body and double up up top. I like those instructions because he, when you double up up top, a guy with a high guard will bring his hands even higher and it'll open up the body shot and we can sneak in a good body shot again. Gurphy came out, quick left, and he connects with a left to the body. And here comes Gonzalez Jr. now. See Gurphy trying to get in those counts. And a little straight right hand by Gurphy. Gurphy pointing to his chin, touching his chin, saying, you can't hurt me. But yeah. I think it's the body shot he's got to be wary of. I think he's saying, uh, hit me in the chin, not the body. <laughs> <laughs> After that body shot, I'll be asking Gonzalez the same thing. There's a combination by Gurphy. So Gurphy got pretty quick hands. When he does let his hands go, he's had some success. There he is again. As Gonzalez put himself out of position there defensively, something you don't want to do. When you slip punches, you want to make those moves shorter. by Gonzalez. And it's Gurphy with a combination of his side steps. I like that step around that Gurphy. Oh, nice counter. And credit to Gurphy. He's getting his counters in there, Jose. Like you said early in the fight, he had to get, uh, get his counters off. And uh, just a credit to his overall character because after that hard body shot around one, another fighter might have just quit on himself. Yeah, Griffey seems to be uh, letting go now. Uh, he he felt the first body shot, and he's letting hands go. He's able to uh, counter a little bit more and uh, not, not get caught as much since the first round. Minute left here in round two. This is our main event here in Austin. There he goes again, the short little counters and steps around. And here he goes. There's a combination by Griffey. And again, Gonzalez puts himself slightly out of position. He's flipping punches. We have to do a better job of maintaining positioning. Stiff jab. Left hook to the body, Gonzalez Jr. Left hook, Gonzalez. Seconds here of round two. Combination by Gurphy. As he tries to counter with that right hand. Gonzalez Jr. comes from a fighting family. He 
If you look in his corner, the gentleman with the bandana, you see him right there. That's his father. Father, of course, former world champion. Won the featherweight title from Kevin Kelly, who was 41-0 at the time back in January of 1995. Made two successful title defenses. And he won that title right here in Texas. He's saying that this last round was a little more even. He needs to keep on working that left hand, uh, not focus so much on the right, but uh, the key to the jab, and uh, it'll open up for left hook to the body, which is what he's focusing on. Gonzalez Jr. loves body shots. He told us that when he fought Carl Frampton back in July. And you remember in that fight, he got penalized a couple of times for going low. Sometimes that's the risk you take when you, uh, you go to the body. Sometimes those shots straight low. His father broke a lot of New York hearts, man. Kevin Kelly was a flesh and flesh from Greens. Yep. <laughs> Gonzalez making a concerted effort to get back on that jab, as his corner told him. Is that left? Missed that left hook. There's another left to the body by Gonzalez. Murphy doing some good countering, though, man. Even a little chuck left hook when he got hit to the body. Oh, nice. There's a left hook. And he fainted with the right first. Gurphy comes back with a one-two of his own. <laughs> Gurphy is 22 and 3. He's only got just six knockouts, and all of his six knockouts. Have all come within three rounds. None have come after the third round. Got the skills, though, man. I like the little side steps he does here. Man. So if someone's going to be stopped in this fight, it's going to come early from Gonzalez. All of his KOs have come within six rounds. <laughs> Under a minute here in round three. Griffey doing a good job being a little more offensive and uh, creating some openings with uh, some nice counters. He's doing a good job of being first as well as sharp counters. <laughs> Under 30 seconds. tradition in college basketball you're not going to want to miss it the gavin tip-off games pits the big east against the big ten four days incredible action it begins next tuesday with nebraska taking on number 11 villanova only on fs1 there's the famous driscoll hotel here in austin our main event Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. You see him on the right of your screen. Grim Gurphy on the left. For Gurphy, this is just his second fight this year. to start the round. Mm. So I got 
be alert at all times, man. It's time to start the round a little bit sleepy. Double jab by Gurphy, right hand. Scored this one, you've got it all knotted up. At 28, you gave Gonzalez Jr. obviously the first round with the knockdown, but you gave rounds two and three to go for. Better to fight. You can score this fight as well. Just go to floridowscoring.com. Quick one-two there by Gurphy. Gonzalez, when he throws a combination, he just steps straight back, or sometimes he'll stand right in front of Gurphy, so it allows Gurphy to be able to have an opportunity to come right back and catch him. So a lot of times, Gonzalez may do good work, but he gets back to work. There he is again right there. As opposed to Gurphy, he does some very nice crack through little side steps when he punches. Here's that counter you talked about. You saw Gonzalez with a jab to the body, but it was Gurphy who countered him with the right hand. Yeah, it looks like Gurphy's uh, counter-punching is doing the job, but it's making Gonzalez think a little bit more about throwing throwing punches. He's not throwing as much as he did uh, the first round. So just a bit lazy defensively is uh, Gonzalez. Just, uh, you know, kind of just languishing around there for throwing those punches here and there, you know? <laughs> One two by Gurphy. He's thinking in there. And then little by little, he's frustrating Gonzalez. They both exchange left hooks. Toe to toe Tuesdays on FS1 will return December 8th live from Trenton, New Jersey. Isaiah Thomas, Keith Tapia, they square off in the main event in the battle of undefeated cruiserweights. December 8th, only on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. <laughs> Looks like Cobrita's, uh, his, Cobrita's trainer's telling him to keep on throwing. Uh, it looks, looks, it sounds like uh, Cobrita's right hand is hurt. Uh, he's saying keep on throwing that left hand, focus on that left hand. Just keep your guard up. You, you know, it's interesting you say that, Jose, because I go back to what he told us in the fighter meeting when we were asking about the Frampton fight. He said, hey, I got him with that right hand, but I hurt the right hand. Yeah. And then he said, I didn't pressure him when I had him hurt. And it's almost the same thing we had here. Yeah. He hurt Gurphy early, but didn't capitalize on it. And you're going to have to use that educated left hand a little bit better because Gurphy's a, a crafty guy. You know, the funny thing about the Frampton fight is I remember seeing Frampton right after the fight, and his right hand was blown up and really swollen. So it's funny, when we talk about the, the injured hands, I felt like both guys may have injured their hands in that fight when fighting each other. There's an overhand right by Gonzalez. So we take a look at the punch stats through round four. Gonzalez Jr. has landed better percentage, but it's Gurphy who's landed more punches. Oh, short uppercut there by Gurphy. Gurphy just much more comfortable uh, after that uh, you know, tough first round. You, might, you, know, you come across the Atlantic and uh, you know, fighting in a, a fight where you're the B side and the, the other guy's the favorite, and you, come, you go down around one. That's a lot to overcome. 
Credit to Gurfee for overcoming it and put, playing well thus far. And there's his counters, Jose, again. He says you said the keys to his victory. And he is just smothering Gonzalez. As we take a look at you, the fans, how you've got it scored here on throwdownscoring.com. And how about this? You, the fans, you've got Gurfee winning the last three rounds. What do you think about that, Paul? You know, uh, I can't go against it. I mean, Gurfee seems to be the more comfortable guy as the rounds progress. You know, he's doing good work, and Gonzalez seems to almost be in a trance thus far. He's, he's, he's not very creative. He's doing the same thing over and over again. And it's Gurfee with the creativity. Jose? Yeah, Gurfee's a little more offensive now. He, he notices he's making a, a Cobita a little more uncomfortable and hesitant to throw. So he's uh, he's on the offensive end and then throwing, initiating the, co the the combinations now. And he's got Gonzalez Jr. on the ropes. <laughs> Gonzalez Jr. connected with a left of the body, but Gurfee came right back with a left of his own. When Gurfee there to be first when he needs to be. And when Gonzalez does get off, Gurfee's ready to counter. So he's very comfortable at this moment. Gonzalez is going to have to do something to change the tempo and give Gurfee something to think about and make him uncomfortable. And right now, Gurfee's getting into his own zone. He's counter right there over the top of the jab. As you pointed out, Jose, he really has not thrown that right hand at all. Rita's trainer is telling him, uh, even if your hand hurts, you got to keep on throwing. You can lose this fight. Uh, you give him, you give him a, a little bit of an advantage, but now you got to fight. Uh, you got to fight your way out of this one. Paula, you're, you're a fighter that's had some hand issues. Talk to me about that when you've been in a fight like that and you've hurt your right hand. I'll tell you what my game plan always was, was to not get into exchanges because as a one-handed fighter, you'll always lose the exchange against a two-handed fighter. So it forced me to become very creative with my jab and dominate with my jab. I just don't know that Gonzalez has the boxing skills to do that. I feel like when Gonzalez is at his best, he's, he's throwing both hands. And so it's a difficult position for somebody with his style to just be one-handed, although there's a good right hand there. Did you ever ever have a game plan knowing that hey, my hand may get hurt in this fight? I gotta go and make sure I got a, a backup game plan for that. I went into fights with my hands broken. So yeah, I, I, uh, I would go into the fight and sometimes it would be boring, but I actually the plan was to not get into any exchanges and just be really creative with the jab and just control the distance and the, and the tempo. But again, it, it's, you gotta have the legs and the boxing skills to do that. And, Gonzalez, I'm not saying he's, he's not he's a bad fighter because he's a very good fighter, but I don't know that he has the boxing uh, ability to, to do that kind of thing. You know, he's the kind of guy who wants to get in there and bang with you. You can't do that when you're one-handed. There's a right hand that connects. And he's just trying to keep Gurfee off of him now. I'll tell you another thing about frustrating about when, when you have a hurt hand as Gurfee comes in and does a nice jab. People may say, oh, he's able to throw the right hand, just bite down and throw it. I'll tell you what the frustrating thing about that is. Sometimes you bite down to throw it, and you, that second to bite down costs you a split second, and you lose the timing on the right hand. So you're not throwing it when you really want to throw it. And sometimes what happens is you get countered or you miss it because the moment it takes you to bite down, to brace for the pain, you're actually losing the timing on that throwing that injured right hand. And Gonzalez is getting peppered right now by Gurfee. He connected with a right, then followed up with a left hand. Inside of a minute here in round six.
Griffey doing a great job initiating uh, contact and uh, countering when he wants to. So he's choosing the spots. He's feeling real comfortable right now. Yeah, there was a right hand. Seconds left in this round as Duffy continues to just peck away at Gonzalez. And you can see some of those punches by Gonzalez Jr. has lost some of the steam. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's clearly frustrated. And here's some of the sneakiness of Murphy. There's a catch and, catch and shoot there as he blocks those body shots and then fires right back. And that's what we said about Gonzalez, kind of standing around after he throws his punches. There's Gurphy leading. There's a counter right hand over the top of the jab of Gonzalez. And again, a, another shot of Gurphy leading with a double jab right hand. So a good mixture of counters as well as being first and leading for Gurphy. That's Gurphy's uncle. He's also his trainer. Camel Gurphy. Cobrita's trainer saying that you know he can't take a punch, so you got to get in there and exchange blows and uh, keep your guard up. Uh, mainly use your left hand. Left to the body by Gonzalez Jr. Another left hook by Gonzalez. See, when you languish inside that pocket like that, you're in the you're in the exchange position. And, and again, if you're one-handed, you don't want to be in that exchange position because you'll never win an exchange being one-handed. Okay, just take a look at the punch stats here through round six. And it's Gurphy. He's landed more punches. A busier fighter, just like that. Another short left uppercut there by Gurphy. Can he connect with that? No counters again. Talked about earlier how Gurphy had to have the counters, and they've been working for him masterfully. There's a right hand by Gonzalez. Griffey doing a great job answering back with a counter with every single punch that Colita's throwing. Yep, and he changes the position. He uses his legs, changes the distance, forces Colita to pick up his legs and chase after him. And he's first at the right moments. He counters at the right moments. Boxing well. So we take a look at how you, the fans, have this one scored thus far. And once again, you've given all the rounds to Griffey except for round one. You heard the corner of Gonzalez Jr. Say he hurt his hand after that first round. Under a minute here in round seven. Gonzalez not turning Salpo. Maybe he's trying to load up that left hand a little bit. Turn back right handed now. Bit down and threw the right hand there. And the fact that he's throwing it, it's probably not broken, but it's probably the knuckles are very bruised. And again, this is just me basing it on my experience. When you're able to throw your right hand, it's usually not broken. When you're not able to throw it, it's probably completely broken. But still, the, the intense bruising makes it painful, and you have to brace for every right hand you throw, and it kills the timing on your offense. Oh, gente. Vai ter 
All right, you got to step it up, Corita. Uh, yeah, you know your hand's hurting, but now you got to throw it. This is the only way to win. You got to come in. Three more rounds to go. You got to go in. If you don't win these last three rounds, we're not going to get the victory. Corita's mentioning it. I just can't throw. My right hand is hurt. I can't, I can't let go. Saying, let's focus on that left hand. Do as much as you can in the last three rounds. We've got to win to have a chance. Wow, that's interesting stuff, especially Junior being so honest. Saying, Look, I just can't throw it. And it's hard, when, especially when you have a father who's been a world champion, who's been through the wars, and he's like, no, no, you got to throw that thing. Yeah, it's got to be tough. He, he knows what he has to do to, to win. He knows what his son has to do, and unfortunately, he just can't do it right now. He, he's, he's uh, I think the, the, his right hand being hurt is, is hurting him from not being able to land that left hook to the body, really sit down on it and, and put, put his weight on it. So I think that's affecting his left hook as well. Of course, yeah, because that's usually the shot he uses to track to set the trap for the left hook. But again, you know, it's not that he's not throwing the right hand. He's probably throwing it uh, because we see that he throws it at times. It's just the timing of it isn't there. You know, he's, the mo I'm telling you, the moment it takes to brace to throw the right hand, because you're, you're human, you're going to brace to throw when you know it's going to hurt. The moment it takes to brace and throw it, ruins the time. It just ruins the time, and, 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 and it kills it, and it makes you easier to counter. You'll miss more often. You, it'll just it, it actually has a backward effect at times, so it's frustrating. You see Gurphy mentioning to the ref, like, hey, you got to tell him to get those punches up. Crowd is really trying to urge Gobrita on. They started a few chance, Gobrita. As we get the halfway point here in round eight. He's still remaining shifty and crafty. Shifts to the left and to the right. Hot shots. Throws combinations when he needs to. And I kind of go to something you, you talked about at the top of the show, Jose, when, you know, Gurphy told it in the fighter meeting. I, I feel no pressure at all. I know this is my U.S. debut, national television debut, but, man, this is a huge opportunity for me to come in here and get a victory. Yeah, he had a, uh, a rough first round, but he's... Uh... He's, uh, he's back in it. He's back in it and feeling comfortable. Now he's uh, using the ring where he should be and uh, countering really well. Airs him right to the body by Garfi. It was a counter to the right hand of Gonzalez. Another right to the body. Left to the body by Garfi. That one may have hurt. Gonzalez Jr. Yeah, it was a good series of body shots. Straight right hand, Gurphy. You see Gonzalez threw a right hand to the body and then backed away. I think he's hurt. Final seconds of round eight. Big round for Gurphy. Round is a nice jab by Gurphy. Corners Gonzalez to the ropes. And there's a nice little body shot there. Gurphy had some better body shots than that, but that was one of the body shots he landed. Cobrita being instructed to keep on throwing. Uh, he, even though he can, he's just, hey, if you have a chance to win this fight, you got to win these last two rounds big. Well, this is round nine. We're scheduled for ten here in our main event. We are in all. 
Austin. Inside the Austin Music Hall. Jose Lopez, Paulie Malinazzi, and Brian Custer. Kareem Kerfee, out of France. Fighting here in the States for the first time, taking on Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. Kerfee was dropped in the first round on a vicious body shot. Since then, has taken total control of this fight. Gonzalez Jr. told his corner he hurt his hand in that first round. Strong left to the body that time by Gonzalez Jr. Well, he definitely came in shape, too. Besides having the character and the, the wherewithal to get through that tough first round. I mean, the way he's moving here, we're on round nine. Very comfortable. He's in shape. Had to be. I mean, he goes back to, I think, when he dropped him, and I asked you, do you ever recover from a body shot? And you said it, it goes to your conditioning. Yeah, it goes to show Gerfie uh, put in a good training camp. He came here in shape, uh, recovered well from, from that vicious body shot in the first round, and now he's uh, pretty much putting on a boxing clinic. chances himself that's what he's doing he's just having fun in their boxing pot shot right now yeah right and then a quick left uppercut oh there's a big left by gonzalez you got hurt yeah he got hurt there he got hurt. final seconds here round nine Now, we've talked about the right hand and Gonzalez Jr. hurting it. Our Ray Flores went into the corner, talked to the corner of Gonzalez Jr., and they believe he hurt it with that right hand right there. Mm -hmm. Now, the corner of Gonzalez, you see him wince here as he connected with that. Now, watch him at the end. Watch him at the end of this round. He's going to hold that, that right hand. Yeah, you can see him kind of shake it there. Now the yeah. corner of Gonzalez Jr. They're speculating. They believe it's broken, as you we kind of talked about. Yeah. You got to come in with everything. You got to go throw some haymakers, get in there. You got to take all the risks now. Look for that looping left hook to land. Those are the instructions from Gonzalez Jr.'s father, senior, former world champion himself. This is the tenth and final round of our main event. I'm not gonna say it for now. Gonzalez Jr. has two losses on his record. Once to Carl Frampton in July. The other loss came to Mexican veteran Ron Alberto Rosas. That was back in April of 2014. You, the fans, you got Gurfey walking away with this one. Minute gone here in the last round. Griffey's not going to make himself a target. It's going to be very difficult for Gonzalez. He you knows he's ahead. He's going he's to try to cruise here. Now, my French is not very good, but he said one of the things they call him in France is Gepardou. 
I guess it means cheetah. Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Cannon, he's moving around like a cheetah. Yeah. And he's slick, too. I tell you. One thing to move, he's, he's got his radar up, too, getting underneath those shots. 90 seconds now left in this fight. Under a minute. You can see Gurphy just standing there in the pocket trying to counter Gonzalez Jr. Yeah, one thing about it, he's got some great positioning on his defense. You know, he doesn't overcommit to it. When he moves, he moves, but he knows how to slip and slide and make those moves just short enough to get off those counters. Gonzalez Jr., right hand by Gurphy. Cobrita still coming forward, still trying to land a, a, a great punch, but not, not, not enough on it since, uh, since the first round. Final seconds here of this fight. Doreen Garfi from France has come here to Austin and believes has got himself a huge upset. We'll find out the judge's official decision when we come back. This is Toe to Toe Tuesday on FS1. Jay and Dan, thank you. Good to see you guys finally working. Let's take a look at our punch stats here. And Gurphy, certainly the busier fighter, landed over 200 of his punches. Gonzalez just a buck 65. Keep in mind, Gonzalez hurt that hand, though, in the first round. Let's take a look at how this fight played out. Early on, around one, it looked like uh, Gonzalez was well on his way to an early night. But a nice body shot and a good setup with that short right hand and then going down to the body, the left hook. And then this right hand right there, it seemed like that's the one you see Gonzalez grimace after throwing it. And at the end of the first round, he's kind of going back to the hip corner, kind of pensive about that right hand. And that was it for the rest of the night. Murphy got into a, a zone, got into his little rhythm. But you could clearly see Gonzalez struggling with the injured hand. He threw the right hand at times. I'm not saying it's broken. A lot of times if you can throw, it's not broken. But the pain of badly bruised or even injured tendons will ruin the timing on your offense. And believe me, when the timing is ruined, you're easier to counter or whatnot. Yeah, you can see that swelling already there, Jose, on that hand as they cut that tape off of that glove. Let's take a look at how you, the fans, had this thing scored. And again, you have it as a unanimous decision, runaway decision for Karim Gurphy. Well, the judge's official decision is in. Let's find out who won this fight. Here's Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Perry Hillen, scores the contest 97 to 92. Judge Anthony Townsend has the bout. 96-93, and Judge Richard Lord sees the bout 95-94, all for your winner by unanimous decision, Karim Gurphy. Karim Gurphy. First fight here in the States. First fight on national television comes in and he shocks the world. I'll tell you, that first, that last judge would have had it a draw if not for the knockdown. He was trying as hard as he could to give Gonzalez the victory. Yes, yeah, as hard as he could. It was not even close to being that close. That guy was trying to give a look for every excuse to give Gonzalez a round. That's, that's, that's horrible. Horrible judging. Horrible. Well, for Paulie Malinaji, Jose Lopez.
Lopez. I'm Brian Custer. Thanks for watching Premier Boxing Champions on FS1. Let's go back to Los Angeles. Jay and Dan for more on Fox Sports Live.